This video classroom lesson is sponsored by Transmission Bench. Visit the transmissionbench.com store for the deluxe super kit, other parts, and even the video classroom lessons used during this project. Hello again. This is 46RE class part one, lesson two. It's time to get our hands dirty. What I really mean is, the transmission you are working on should be on a safe, sturdy bench or table exactly as it was removed from the vehicle. It should be drained of all fluid, but still covered with oil, dirt, and road grime. In other words, don't attempt to clean the case until after the transmission is disassembled. You may be tempted to take it to the car wash and blast it with 900 PSI of water and detergent before you place it on a workbench. It's not a good idea. Water can quickly destroy many transmission parts, especially the electronic ones, such as the vehicle speed sensor and output sensor. High pressure washers can inject water past their seals, ruining them and water on the bare steel surfaces of the input shaft and output shafts as well as the pump housing will quickly oxidize and turn them brown. Only the empty aluminum case should be washed with a water-based solution. All other parts should be cleaned with a petroleum-based solvent such as mineral spirits. The goals of this lesson are removal of external assemblies, separation of the overdrive section from the main case, and finally, disassembly of the overdrive section. You'll need the following tools, 11 millimeter or 7 16 inch 3 8 drive socket, 13 millimeter or half inch 3 8 inch drive socket, 3 8 drive ratchet, a T25 quarter inch drive Torx bit, quarter inch drive ratchet, small, medium, and large flathead screwdrivers, mechanics pick, boxed in 11 millimeter or 7 16 inch wrench, a one inch open or box in wrench, or one inch six point socket and half inch ratchet, snap ring pliers, and a box for small parts. You'll also need safety glasses, gloves, and a face shield. Put your glasses on now. We'll begin with the transmission as you see here. Our demonstration transmission has been taken apart cleaned of dirt and fluids, and then reassembled with its original serious problems still present for us to discover and discuss. It'd be a good idea for you to remove the pan in order to drain the fluid from your transmission before you remove it from the vehicle. The torque converter should be removed and set aside. If you are working on a 2005 and later 48RE model, remove the electronic throttle valve actuator assembly located above the selector shaft. Set it and the two bolts which attach it to the case onto the bench next to the small parts box. All earlier models will have a throttle valve lever located here. Use an 11 millimeter or 7 16 inch box in wrench to loosen the clamping bolt. Gently pry it up and off with a medium or large screwdriver. Place it into the box. Now move the selector lever from the park position to the low 
first gear position. This will extend the internal parking rod mechanism as far back as possible in order to make removal of the overdrive section much easier later. Use an 11 millimeter wrench to loosen this clamping bolt. Use a large screwdriver to pry the lever up and off of the selector shaft. Set it into the box. Use a one inch wrench or socket to loosen and remove the neutral safety and backup light switch. Place it here with other small parts. Two thousand and two and later models have a large square transmission range selector located here instead of the three prong switch. Detach it by removing two bolts with a Torx bit and simply pull it out. Set the three pieces into the box. Use a one inch socket or wrench to loosen and remove the output sensor. Place it in the box. Use a 13 millimeter or half inch wrench or socket to loosen and remove the bolt and bracket which fasten the vehicle speed sensor. Pull the sensor housing and gear out. Set them into the box. Use an 11 millimeter or 7 16 inch six point socket along with a six inch or longer extension and ratchet to remove the seven bolts which attach the overdrive section of the transmission to the main case.
Use a large screwdriver to pry here and here. Pull the housing completely off of the intermediate shaft. Set it like so onto the parts bench. Remove this thrust bearing, steel spacer, and the overdrive apply piston. Set them onto the parts bench in the order they were removed. Place the piston down first with the two protruding locating pins facing downward. Set the steel spacer ring into its recess. Finally, set the thrust bearing down with the protruding inner race lip facing forward toward the spacer. Remove this thin round snap ring and set it aside on top of the piston. Depending on model, remove a thin steel plate or as you see here, a thick end plate. Turn it over and set it aside. Remove a friction plate next. You may need to use a mechanics pick or screwdriver if it is badly damaged as this one is. Turn it over and set it on top of the steel plate. As a side note, a healthy friction should look like this. Remove a steel plate next. Turn it over and set it aside. Continue to remove all friction and steel plates and set them aside as removed. Finally, remove the thick end plate. The next part to remove is a wavy snap ring. Use a small screwdriver to pry an end up and out. Remove it and set it on top of the overdrive clutch pack. Now remove a flat snap ring the same way. Set it onto the wavy snap ring. Use a T25 Torx bit and ratchet to remove the two bolts which fasten this snap ring access cover.
pry it up and off with a small screwdriver. Set the bolts, cover, and gasket with the other small parts. Use large snap ring pliers to spread this snap ring. This will release a very large diameter roller bearing which locates the rotating assembly. Now you can pull it out. Set it to the side. If the case to overdrive housing gasket remained here on the case and it will easily peel off, remove it and place it under the overdrive housing. You may have noticed by now that I have not thrown away anything, even parts such as paper gaskets. It's important to save everything until after the project is finished because you may need to compare a new part with the old one later. Save everything. We need to further disassemble this section with a shop press. But before we do, you must get a face shield and put it on. As I mentioned before, there are four areas in this transmission where you will encounter high spring tension. The shield will not only protect your eyes, but also your entire head and face from snap rings, tools, and springs if they accidentally become projectiles. Always think safety. Get a pair of leather work gloves too. Now we're ready to work with the press. Set the assembly onto a shop press equipped as you see here. The roller bearing should rest on top of the support bars. Use an appropriate tool which will sit atop the overdrive clutch hub and also straddle the inner sun gear. Force the hub down just enough to release the direct clutch snap ring. Use a mechanics pick to lift one end of the snap ring up and out. Completely remove it from its groove. Let it rest on top of the housing. Compress the assembly further to expose the round retaining ring on the sun gear. Pry it out and off with the pick. Remove it and set it aside. Slowly release the pressure and allow the assembly to expand. Take the entire section back to the parts bench. Set it like so. Set the sun gear retaining ring onto the bench. Set the direct clutch snap ring around it. As a side note, this snap ring should never be reused. It is always replaced during an overhaul. High pressure and repetitive flexing causes it to weaken and eventually break over time. It is common to find this snap ring broken into six or more pieces and no longer in the groove. When this happens, the vehicle will not have reverse. For now, save it and set it onto the bench.
Now slide the overdrive direct clutch pack off of the inner hub. This pack consists of an end plate, eight friction and seven steel plates and finally an apply plate. The number of plates varies depending on model. Turn all the plates over and set them in the same order as removed on top of the snap ring. Pull out the inner hub large spring, sun gear and spring seat, and finally a thrust bearing. Note that the bearing mounts onto the spring only one way. Turn these parts over and set them down as removed. Pull out the planetary gear set. Use snap ring pliers to grasp and pull out the inner roller clutch race. Carefully remove the roller and spring cage assembly. If any of the rollers and springs are accidentally pushed out of the cage, Ease one of the rollers out to note how the accordion spring is positioned and push it back in. Set the cage onto the inner race. Finally, remove a thrust bearing. Set it as removed onto the inner race. In order to make cleaning of the overdrive housing easier, we need to remove two snap rings in order to separate it from the ring gear. Remove the first one like so. Stand the assembly on in and remove the second circular snap ring. Separate the parts and set the snap rings as removed. Check the output ball bearing. It should turn freely and quietly. If the outer race feels loose or you encounter any chattering from pitting, remove this snap ring to replace the bearing. This one feels fine. I'll leave it as is mounted onto the shaft. Finally, before we conclude this lesson, set the overdrive housing down lengthwise and inspect the smaller roller bearing deep inside. Confirm with your fingers that it turns freely with no indication of damage. This one turns smoothly and feels fine. If the bearing in your housing feels pitted or chatters as you turn it, use snap ring pliers to remove its retainer. Remove the bearing, set it aside, and make a note that you will need a replacement. This concludes part one, lesson two. In the next lesson, we'll work on the main case. I'll see you then.